Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. Let's get started. Welcome to a completely random video at Mr. Carlson's Lab. You recall last year, we put up the 369 antenna together. And it's been working fantastic. If you've been listening to any of the receiver restorations to this point, uh, the antenna is nothing short of phenomenal. It really does work quite well. So I used welding wire last year, and welding wire does have a tendency to rust. It's copper coated, but the copper's thick, and of course it wears off. So I just want to make sure in this video here that the wire is going to hold up through the winter time because if we want to get through the grand receiver, the radio receiver restoration series together, this thing needs to hold up. So this is Charlie, our dog's territory. So Charlie the Wonder Dog has taken over our porch. You'll meet Charlie. He's a fantastic dog. So we'll uh, meet him in a future video here. So there's the feed point there. And then the wiring runs all the way out this way, all the way down to this end of the shop. Look at my fantastic lawn. Isn't that nice? We've uh, had some family issues this year and you've probably seen this in the comments. And this stuff has taken zero priority. So the lawn's toast, I'll end up fixing that up. Not a big deal, it's just lawn. Probably wondering about that thing too, right? I have a grandkid on the way. Yes, Grandpa Carlson, Grandpa Paul, whatever. So, this is a bucket truck, and this is the truck that we're going to use to go up and inspect the wiring on this antenna. Yes, Mr. Carlson's lab owns a bucket truck. So this is all built last year. This was part of the 369 antenna series. Uh, you can see that in my list of videos here. This whole thing was put together last year and it's held up fantastic. Not a single problem with this whatsoever. In the winter time, the only issue is, is right at the top here, you see how the, the wires come up and then each of them has their own rope down here and then they're, they're tensioned by some springs. You wouldn't think of this, but in the winter time, snow settles on that super fine wire settles on that wire in it and what happens is they kind of sag and because it's a springy wire is they come together and they go like this and they wind up so i had to make a special tool on a pole that i could with a coat hanger that would go between the wires and i could walk along and try and separate them and that's really painful so i don't want that to happen this year so uh some of the things here You'll see the mast has a bit of a bow to it, and that's because of this one rope here that's spring tensioned on this one side. There's also a guy wire, which you probably can't see, that runs back like this. So when the snow settles on it, it comes a little bit more over this way, and of course that's not helping anything, right? So I'm going to put one guy wire from the top to this corner of the shop. We'll do that in a separate video, and I'll put another one over to this corner of the shop as well. There's one running back, and of course the spring tension on the wires this way, everything should be just fine. Now this thing is held up through wind and rain and everything. Like we've had some pretty crazy winds. Nothing happens. Wires stay perfectly in place. Uh, mast is just the way it is. It's just that snow or ice on the actual wires that weighs them down. So that's uh, one of the things that I'm going to have to uh, look into. Now up here is where the wires come to the insulators and that's where I'm going to check them out today. So I'm going to check out the wires here and make sure that the rust isn't too bad. I know they've rusted a bit, but uh, as long as the rust is, you know, not bad, we'll just leave it alone. If not, then I'm going to end up replacing those wires with a stainless welding wire. So in order to do that, we need to use the bucket truck over here. So, keys to the bucket truck. So I'll start this thing up. If you've never been up in a bucket truck before, this will be your first time. Look at that. So down here's the PTO. That's on because I've recently used the hydraulics. I've uh, moved the outriggers here. So I will put the key in the ignition. Turn this on. That noise you hear is the electric brakes and a very annoying beeper. Diesel starts up just like that. Works wonderful. So I have to move this truck over here because I don't want to move the boom here. So I'll show you this, the boom and the buckets. So this is the bottom boom here. And then this is the upper boom on the top. So if I was to bring this over the shop, I can't see this area when I'm up there. And if I rotate this, I don't want to take my gutters out. So I'm going to move this to where I can see everything. That's the reason I'm going to do that. So some things about bucket trucks you might not know. When this thing was in service, of course, this was very important, right? Because this is working around hydro lines and things like that. Well, these things here are insulated to about, I think the tag said 138,000 volts. 
and that's between you know the arrows only right because we see we have screws here so just in case the operator did make a mistake way back when uh, you know this would give you a protection and of course you know you can see on the top the little arrows there and then there's arrows in the back so there's a lot more area on the top one that uh, allows for uh, the operator to uh, be a little bit uh, well if you made, made a mistake it would give them some protection let's just put them that way put it that way so that's what this is for anyways something about a bucket truck you might not know these are the controls here that allow me to move all of this all the hydraulics down here from sitting down here so I can sit on the side here like so and I can just sit here push this in and uh, then that gives me control over this here now right now the hydraulics are set to the outriggers on the side of the truck here and down here so there's no there's no hydraulic pressure up here right now so if you've never used a bucket truck before hey now you'll know how so down here this is the valve that sets it from the outriggers to the to up top so it moves the hydraulic pressure around so right now if i was to press this this outrigger in the back here will come out so i can level the truck i'll give you an example so push that out. the truck is idling so the pto is moving really slow uh, if i bring the engine rpm up just a touch uh, this will move all quite a bit faster so now if i push this in this will move the hydraulic pressure up to the top here it goes to the it defaults to the buckets and then if i push that lever that i showed you over there uh it'll take the pressure off this and put it at that control so if i push this in you can hear the hissing so now the controls are up here in the bucket so when i go up in the bucket all the pressure is up there and then of course when i go back over here if i wanted to control this if i press this lever right here that moves the controls from the bucket down to this area right here so I can move everything from this point. So that's how that all works. So now you know how a bucket truck works. So anyways, so that's how that is. So what I need to do right now is I'll remove the blocks from the tires here. Always block everything up. And as you know, I'm, uh, I'm safe. I got blocks everywhere. So I'm a little excessive with the wheel shocks. So even under the front tires, everything. So what I'm going to do is I'll move this over to this area here and uh, we'll go up in the bucket together. So if you've never been up in a bucket truck before, this will be your first time. So uh, let's make this all happen. How does that sound? All right, the truck's been warmed up. Let's move it over to this side here. I've removed the wheel chocks already. So I'll get out of the truck here. Oh, by the way, we need to push the PTO down first. So I'll tell you some interesting stories about that. So you see these videos on YouTube and all over the place. Let's push this down. I don't know if you can see that there. Push that down to the floor. So now the PTO is disengaged. So you see these uh, videos on YouTube where, you know, the dump trucks will hit an overpass because they've raised the box. And the reason that they've done that is they've left their PTO engaged and they've hit a lever and they haven't realized it while they're driving. So it's extremely important to always remember to always uh, disengage the PTO. Some of them have warning lights. Some won't even let you go into drive without uh, uh, taking the PTO off. This is pretty rudimentary. So this thing will let you drive miles and miles and miles with it on. Okay, so here we go. Put on the brake. So here we are. So transmissions in vehicles like this don't have park. At least this one's an automatic. There's an Allison transmission in it. So it's neutral and this is your park. This is your brake right here. So in order to move this thing, Push this down like so, put this into drive, and we're ready to move. So I'll just back this up over here. Somebody drove up the road here just a moment ago, so I just want to make sure he's not going to come over. All right, into reverse we go. Need to trim that. Trim this right here. It's caught on the truck. There we go. And I think I'm doing pretty good. I think that's about as close as I'm going to get. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. So back into neutral. Break up. Let's check on things here.
yeah that should be good so I just got to put out the outriggers put some wooden pads under the outriggers right now and uh, we should be ready to go up to the antenna here all right I've moved the boom and I'm ready to get into the bucket here so this is a long process I put the outriggers out and got everything moved over so we're ready to move around in this thing here so this is the control that does everything so what we're gonna do is get in the bucket and get up to the antenna up there put on my safety line like so keep that out of the way okay all right this way and up That whistling noise that you hear is the bucket self-leveling because you can see that this thing is moving on its own. So I just want to miss the house, or I should say the shop. Now I can also, if I want to move this over that way, all I got to do is just push this this way and then do it like this. And I can very carefully get away from this portion of the, the eave so I'm not going to cause any issues. Right, Could probably just do that and be life, make life a whole lot easier, right? So again, back and like this. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to move this one here up. This moves quite a bit faster. So now that I've cleared this, I can move this back over this way. All right, and I'll go up again. You can see we're getting closer and closer. You can see I'm coming down, but I'm moving in closer and closer and closer, just slowly edging towards this, right? I gotta be careful with the guy wire right here. I don't touch it with the winch. Okay. And here we go. We're getting closer and closer. Keeping an eye on the hydraulics to make sure I don't overextend anything, because as I say, I am far away from the shop, right? We're pretty much here. And I think one more go. As you can see, I'm playing it pretty safe. Okay, I'm about as close as I want to be to this guy wire right here. So as you can see, the pulleys are pretty good. And as you can see, how the wires have a bit of a droop to them. So what I want to do is give this a bit of a shot with some WD-40 spray and stay. So I just want to do that right now. move that around a little bit these needed the lubrication really bad and I'm glad I got to that because it's just metal on metal here right so there we go
hope you can see that there. It's looking really good. It's a little bit rusted, right? Just a little bit rusted. I'm getting pretty close to the mass there. It's a little bit rusted, not too bad. So it's nice and thick. So I think we're going to be doing okay. I think we're going to be doing okay. So I'll just, I'll just get this away from the mast. Okay, so what I'm going to do is push this this way and do this. Come down a bit. Yeah, it's looking really good. No problems there. The zap straps are holding out very well. I think we're good to go. So that'll hold up through the winter time, no problems. I'll probably get a couple years out of this, I think. So yeah, I think we're doing good. No problems. And we're back on the ground again, just like that. So the wiring looks okay, and I think we're gonna be good. So it's just, yeah, added that little bit of lubrication up there. That should be good for a little while. So I just need to go back up there and put guy wires on. And uh, we'll do that in another video. So we got to go up to this corner, that corner, and the uh, top of the mast there to put the guy wires on. If you're enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be doing lots of circuitry design, repairs, restorations, and all of that neat electronic stuff. If you're all about electronics like I am, you're definitely going to want to subscribe and hit that bell symbol so you get notified as soon as I post a brand new video. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll pin the link at the top of the comment section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.